And then finally we get to uh, Nine Full Moons. Um, not directed by you, Brian, but it, because it has the um, Brian Maguire players. Mm, so yeah. many of them are in uh, like a Christopher Guest right. kind of group. The, the cast of characters that you say, I mean, like the reason why Nine Full Moons is that is because of Brett. And, and, and Brett and I met about 10 years ago, and we've always kind of talked about it as like we've been building and collecting sort of this like contingency of, uh, of talented, lovey, loving people. And uh, so I was really kind of a little bit pissed off or frustrated when Nine Full Moons was being conceptualized because we were not finished with Carlos yet, you know, and like, so the whole camp was like moving over here to this, and I'm like, guys, you know, like, wait a minute, you know, um, so, you know, even me coming on as an actor and that, like, I think I was originally going, I'm too busy, I can't do it, and then like everybody else was in, and I'm like, oh, is there a part for me, you know, like that kind of came around on the back, I'm like, well, maybe I could play something, you know, yeah, so, hold on, hold on, we'll get you, yeah, we'll get you so, yeah, Harry Dean Stanton is, is even in that, and he's mm -hmm. been popping up in all of your films, and um, I'd like to know how you met him, and um, describe your relationship. Meeting Harry, Harry uh, comes from uh, uh, one of the producers, uh, Logan Sparks, uh, he produced On Holiday, Black Bell, Privateer. He acts in Carlos, he's one of the barflies. And uh, he's been uh, Harry Dean's assistant for about eight, eight years now, eight or nine years now, I think. And so it was like, our producer works for Harry, You're like, can we get him in the movie? You know, and then like after that, we've kind of grown into, into pretty good friends uh, over, the, over the years, even though he's a crazy old man. I, I love the guy. Can you uh, maybe retell the, uh, the Skype story that we were talking about earlier? That's pretty. Oh cool. sure, yeah. So uh, I had before the day before I left for London, I, I had to uh, do an interview alongside Harry Dean Stanton in, in his living room, and uh, I get there, and you know it was all planned out. We were going to call from uh, Harry's landline, and the first thing out of Harry's mouth that he asked me is. Uh, do we have to call from the landline? And I said, oh, uh, yeah, knowing that this is going to go bad. And he was like, well, and Logan said this was okay. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to throw Logan under the bus, but yeah, he's like, this is bullshit. You know, and I'm like, well, let me see if I can figure out how to call on Skype. And he just looked at me and he went, what? And I'm like, let me, just let me figure it out. Give me some time here. And he sat down, was watching his game shows, and he you know, eventually figured it out. Me and Harry are leaning over to the couch, like with the phone like this there's this we're breaking up we barely could hear the, the words of the the interviewer but we barely got through it and and it was a I don't know it was funny it's yeah. a funny little moment uh, Brett the characters that you've played in Brian's films mm -hmm. are so larger than life and outside themselves in nine full moons it's the complete opposite mm -hmm. he's so deep inside himself it's almost like he's not there that's what I've heard, yeah, that's what I've heard. <laughs> yeah. um, <clears throat> well, um, let's see. Well, can I just say something about uh, the, yeah, these, sure. both of these movies? Like, uh, you know, uh, we have this great group of people that we've been working with, you know, since In Search of a Midnight Kiss, and, and uh, you know, living in L.A., you meet all kinds of people. You meet actors that drive fancy cars, and then you meet people who care about about what we do and and uh, after amassing this this group of talented people and the people we could kind of that we want to work with you know we sort of car the Carlos spills the bean script was forming and I had met Tomer Almagor and he had told me the story of how of how he had met um, his wife and um, and so kind of the idea was like well let's make two movies let's make one comedy let's make one drama within one year's time and with almost all the same people, you know, and because I think when you're making independent film, half of it is, you know, or a big part of it is telling stories and another part is, is giving people their first shot or giving, or getting a chance to exhibit what you can do. And so like our, you know, our cinematographer, Robert Murphy, I said, you know, I mean, let's have him shoot both and, and let's, let's use, Let's use the same sound people. Let's use the same uh, the same actors in different roles, and let's let's see if we can pull off a funny comedy and a drama that, that makes people feel something, you know. And and so I think we did it, you know. Absolutely. And so, um, but in terms of of uh, the role of Lev, um, you know, this 
this character uh, is is based on the, the director and and the tough times that he had when he when he met his wife and and there was a time when this was sort of a, a, a secret uh, of and we were sort of trying to hide who the film was about and and hide it in the script and change things but um, I think that time's over and I think it really that you know the truth is is that um, this was a very tough time in in in, in the director's life and and where he was was a very internal person and and was having a very hard time with with the universe and, and his whole life and so um, you know I think the the joy of life was very challenged for him at that time and then I also had gone through a lot in my own life right right before we made nine full moons and so it sort of seemed to land into place the way that uh, the gods of creativity are supposed to help us as we make these things and and so um, yeah so it definitely was not uh, you know I don't I don't I don't want to play a dr do a drama every every year or every few months I don't really want to act in a, in a drama I like I think the power of making people laugh the power of making people feel something and coming away you know but then I think uh, you know, once every ten years or so, you know, to to really do to try to do a drama and play a role that can touch people, um, you know, because then I think it means more uh, anyway. And because I think as as serious actors, the dramatic roles and and really feeling something when you're going through a character, um, if you do it all the time, it sort of ma it, it takes some of the the juice out of it. You know, and so uh, to it was a strange gift that that film, and it was like like Ryan said, it was sort of frustrating for all of us, and um, we it wasn't our normal team that that we sort of love working together, and and we sort of aspire to be like a Woody Allen team where it's the same guys working together, and and we we know how to respect each other and work, and that's what we're building. But this was like a diff this was a different director, and it was a different. A different team using a lot of our same people and so it just uh, for me nine full moons was a lesson in in finishing what you started because I think as trouble as money ran out it was you know it was one of those stories one of those independent film stories where money ran out we couldn't make payroll we had to raise a certain amount of money so everyone could come back to work the next day and, and it was very it was less stable than <laughs> even the rest of our of our projects, you know, so production wise it was very very different and um, But I think you know when you start something and and you also You know when you when you start a film or you start anything in life and you start bringing other people in Then you get this responsibility where you have to see it through till the end And I think nine full moons is is was that lesson for me and for many of us that it was like because it was not as desirable, but it was, and it was tough. You know, it's like, sometimes people say that they had the worst experience on a movie and then it turned out the best, or they say they had the best experience and it turned out, you know, terrible. And mm -hmm. so, this this movie is, it's, uh, and I credit a lot of it to Tomer Almagor and to, to Robert Murphy, who shot the movie and also edited the film t tirelessly for, nights and nights till five in the morning for four months for for over a year they spent in the editing bay and um, and in the color correction and making it look as, as beautiful as it turned out and um, you know so it's two films that got made by almost a lot of the a lot of the same people but but really uh, different you know different people shined and and uh, we finished them, you know, and, and now we have something to watch, and, and so it means a lot. So us, quite yeah. a bit of uh, behind-the-scenes drama then from the talented team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. And I'm, I'm responsible for as much of it as anyone, so <laughs> I take, I'll take that one, yeah. I have my own things going <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In terms of the characters, though, you're not playing... Um, Comedy, which you usually do, just in terms of performing, 
Right. With you, know, you said it was a different team, but a lot of the same gang. So, how was the vibe of uh, you know your group of, of guys and girls doing a drama? Yeah. Uh, well, for me it was interesting because I was like, kind of in and out. I wasn't around the set all that much, and I would kind of pop in, and I was all, usually popping in already irritated and, and ready to go. So, <laughs> so uh, that that was it was fun to to not be the boss, you know, and like show up and just be there to act and be able to like communicate with my friends and fellows who I've, I've worked with so many times and, and drink stuff, and, the of and drink yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah, that was. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Not me. Not, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was cool. So he yeah. probably have more of an answer for that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I mean, it was just uh, it. It's you know, well, well also bringing uh, Andy Simons into the into the team was a very lucky lucky strike for us. And um, you know, I worked on this movie. Uh, Scoop McNary and I both had been cast in a movie called The Alpha Hours which shot in Seattle, directed by Megan Griffiths, went on to play Sundance. Amy was the lead of that, she was amazing. And uh, I actually first saw her with a flip cam. I had a flip cam shooting behind the scenes on set, kind of secretly. And uh, I watched her come in on this flip cam and I just looked at her and I said, and I was watching a, a good movie, you know, on this flip cam, just because she sat down and started reading this book and I was just like, wow, this woman, you can just shoot her reading a book and it's a, a good movie, you know? And so I, and then I watched how amazing she was in that film and she's funny and she's deep and she's, she's wonderful, wonderfully talented actress. And um, so then when I had uh, talked to Tomer and found out that I was, you know, that we were gonna make this film together and I started putting some of my people in places of the different characters and and uh, you know and I and I uh, you know actually Tomer came to the set of Carlos Spills the Beans and watched Brian act in that scene where he fires Max Hoffman in the back alley and so he watched that and then he said are you sure that's the guy that I want to <laughs> play in this like serious drama and I said dude just trust me like we're doing a comedy right now we can all do we could all do the drama too, you know, and so. And he won't have a tash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. will be gone. <laughs> right, and so, so uh, you know, I sent some pictures of of Amy over to to uh, to play, you know, uh, to see if they liked her for the role of Frankie. And just from her eyes, from the picture. Yeah, from he, stills. He wrote, yeah, just from stills. He wrote back to me. He's like, this woman's eyes. He's like, I, I, who is she? And all this stuff. And I said, okay, hold on, like. Um, so I called her and I said, you know, there's a chance we could, we could play man and wife in this movie and it's a really touching story. And uh, she's probably heard that one before, you know, from some sleazy guys in LA or whatever. So anyway, so she finally came out and met them and, and, uh, and once, you know, the script was still forming and once she realized the true story of, of what was, you know, what she could play, she was really, she was signed, signed on to it. And so... So then we uh, we basically were just about to start shooting this movie, and then um, I walked into a room of 25 people with an intervention I, that I had, uh, and um, I was there. <laughs> he was there, <laughs> and uh, you know, so basically I went off to to learn how to stop drinking, and but the but the team went to work and started shooting just with Amy and shooting some of her scenes and. Uh, and basically, when I returned and watched what they made, and watched what Robert Murphy shot with Marcello Altier Altieri, who is our DP of Privateer, of Privateer but um, he was our first assistant camera and focused with Robert and worked with Robert the entire time. What they made of that, that first piece that they shot while I was gone was so beautiful. It brought tears to my eyes, and it sort of, you know, it, it just, it just let me know that this film was really going to get made, and and when people saw what they made, then that's how we were able to raise raise money and chunk by chunk and and actually complete that that film, and so uh, yeah, c'est la vie, as they say in France. I just learned that, but yeah.